I knew exactly what I wanted. I just didn't know how to get there. Mentorship is gaining the confidence of the person whom you are going to mentor. HB has really opened up avenues for me to flourish as a scholar. The HB year was the turning point of my research as a scholar. I seek ways for engagement with other humanists. Break boundaries and forge ahead in humanity scholarship. The humanities for a long time, up to date, is highly underfunded. And if you think about it, who gives money for someone to study political cartoons? Who gives money for someone to study vehicle inscriptions, right? All the funding agencies support serious research, right? The AHP plays a very good role in, you know, helping scholars uh, on the continent, you know, to have the time and the space to kind of seek refuge and then articulate our thoughts on paper or on the laptop, if you can put it that way. Popular culture in the humanities is key and we as scholars need to um, really highlight this in terms of the fact that it helps to make us aware that the everyday thing that we engage with holds a place to help us understand our everyday environment. In my experience, the AHP um, grant allowed me to take a year off to write about some of the topics I'm interested in at Rhodes University in Grahamstown, South Africa, where I presented some of my works on political cartoons, as well as also even old exhibitions, which is basically taking knowledge to the streets, if you can call it that way. The AHP allowed me to connect with my South African folks, I call them, and also people from East Africa as well. So, for example, Professor Grace Musila, who is kind of a stalwart, right, in um, African studies, invited me to Tanzania, and there I met the editor of the Journal of African Cultural Studies. And, you know, she saw what I was doing and said, hey, do you want to be on the advisory board of the Journal of African Cultural Studies? So I can go on and on and on about how the AHP has really opened up, you know, um, avenues, you know, for me to flourish as a scholar. So when I was at the University of Cape Town, I threw this idea and said, I'm seriously thinking about this Center of African Popular Court. And it's like, it's a very good idea. Why don't you really explore it? So when I came back, I discussed it with people at my university. And, you know, they kind of agreed. But let's just say that it took time for them to realize the importance of this particular center. But it got established. Dr. Frimpong proposed the idea and it was very easy to support him. Um, he chose popular culture. We're surrounded by young people. If we're going to reach them and let them appreciate Africa, why not through what they are used to and what they love? So we've given him a space where he can hang his art, where he can meet people, where he can, you know, he has an, a unit now. The purpose of the Center for African Popular Culture at Ashase is to spotlight the intellectual relevance of African popular culture. Obviously the center is young, but at least we've organized one conference around um, the late musician Ebony Reigns, right? And the goal of that conference was to spotlight that our artists matter as any other important uh, people. The emotions that evoked in him because such a young and beautiful talent had passed away uh, drew us all in. So we realized that, oh my goodness, in the arts there's lyrical text, there's visual text that we can teach our students how to derive meaning from to get a better understanding of who they are, their identity. The center also organized a major exhibition um, with Gallery 1957, and it highlighted two artists, Bright Akwe, Ghanaian satirist, and Michael Soy, a Kenyan artist. AHP has been very influential in my life, and I'm sure other recipients will, will say the same thing. For the AHP to recognize my application and say, look, this is something worthy of funding, boosted my confidence and say, I need to go full throttle, right, at this research that I'm doing. So in terms of collaborations with um, 
AHP folks, right? I can mention Professor Nanaba, I can mention Professor Adumakon. Professor Adumakon has been a constant supporter in terms of inviting me to conferences, alerting me to, you know, um, resources and sources, right? And I'm currently working with her on a consultancy project called the Africa Institute in the UAE, Sharjah. The project will involve activities both in Ghana and in Sharjah. So we're looking at lectures, we're looking at performances of various kinds, we're looking at an exhibition, um, anything that can allow us to have conversations about where Ghana is within Africa in a more uh, popular kind of sense. Of course there will be academic aspects of it, but we, w we want to make it more, um, what is it, translatable for, if you like, um, an ord ordinary um, audience. And so, you know, obviously, I think that if we're looking at the academy, Odo Frimpong is one of the people that uh, one would want to work with in that context. So five years from now, trust me, it's going to be fireworks. In terms of my publication, in terms of the exhibitions I do, in terms of the influence I'm going to have on my students. Also, I'm going to kind of seriously work with AHP, right, to help me connect with, you know, um, centers and maybe personalities, as well as funding agencies, right, to help me, you know, ground the center as the hub to come and study African popular culture.